Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly. In this lecture, I'm going to show you that how you can consume your Firestore data using a RESTful API. Now you might be thinking, okay, why would you do that? Why can't you just use the REST, well, the Firestore client in your app and just get the data like that? And that is true. I mean, that is the best way to get it. But sometimes you might be limited. Sometimes you might be working on Internet of Things. Sometimes you might some additional information, database administration tasks. And sometimes your company or your manager may not even allow you to download a Firestore client and embed it into your application. Uh, that has actually happened to me. I mean, we were using a long time ago, we were trying to use jQuery and it was like a two week process of approval to use jQuery library. So in big companies, when you try to download and integrate libraries into your client, like iOS client and iOS application, it goes through a long process. Now, having said that, if you do have a choice of a Firestore client install on your iOS app versus the REST API, I would always go with the Firestore client because as you'll see, the RESTful API does work, but it is going to send you information in a way that you may have to massage it later. So let's go ahead and first check out that uh, what actually it does return. So you can see the URL over here, and this will be different for your project also. So you can see over here we are, so this is the base URL, it's gonna go till here. And then the grocery app part, which is this part, this is the name of my grocery app. This is the ID of my grocery app. Then we have the databases, default, documents, and then stores. So if we go ahead and look at our actual data right over here, we have a collection called stores. So if I pass in the stores and send it, it's going to return me this result. You can see documents, and it gives you a result in a very different, weird kind of a way. It will be hard for you to parse, but we're going to take a look at different techniques we can use to parse these things. So you can see it gives you documents, which is an array, so that's good. But then you have a name and you have fields, which has address, and then you have a string value key, which has the ad actual address. And then you have a name key with a string value key, which has the actual name. And this goes for the second one also. Now, if I go ahead and go to the URL and assign this particular document ID, then I am obviously going to get that particular document. There we go, just one single document. Now, I, I want to fetch all of them, so I'm not going to use that, but you can read more about documentation, how to, how to uh, delete and update and all those kind of things. So now the problem is that, well, okay, we have this, but how do we get this into our Swift objects? So instead of working with a Swift UI app, I'm going to be working on the playground. Because the whole idea is just to read the information and get it to our objects. So there are a couple of different things I need to do. The first thing I need, obviously, is some sort of a URL. So in the end, you'll see that it will more become like a JSON parsing tutorial rather than a Firebase RESTful API tutorial. Because for Firebase RESTful API, you just need the link. So here we go. That's the link. And now I can go ahead and possibly do URL session dot shared dot data task with the URL. And I can go ahead and possibly pass in the URL over here with the string. And the URL is URL. I'm going to just unwrap it. You can safely unwrap it if you want to. That's fine. We will get the data. We need the data. We will get the response. We will get the error. We get the error. Okay, we'll get it. All right. Now we do have to unwrap the data. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. We have unwrapped the data. Now is the next part is actually quite hard because now you need to actually decode the data into your model files, but we are model classes. We don't really have any model classes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the result that we are getting. Okay. So looking at the result, we can see that we have some sort of a parent object, which is right here. So let's go ahead and create that parent object. So this parent object, I'm going to go ahead and create it, and I'm going to call this a structure. 
and it will be since our amp is grocery i'm just going to call it grocery response which will be codable okay great and inside over here if you look over here inside this object we have only one key which is documents which is an array so i want to also create that key but instead of calling it documents i'm going to call it stores store now obviously stores is different it's not going to map correctly so we have to provide some sort of a coding keys to make this work and also store model doesn't really exist so let's go ahead and add that and now we have to work with the store model what will the store model look like so structure store codable there we go so that's a store at least now the error will go away okay so this is the portion that we are talking about now this part now the store does have a name property but that's not the name that we want the name is actually deeply inside something called fields and that is the name that we actually want so we need to get the name from something called string value which is all inside some fields key so that's going to be a little bit hard to get but let's go ahead and create our name and let's go ahead and create an address okay now one of the things we should create is the store keys and i'm going to go ahead and create store keys and going to represent the fields fields so that we can go ahead and provide keys for this one fields all right and inside the field keys so let's do another one we will do a field key so now we are talking about what is inside each field and inside each field there is name and there is address there is name and there is address now the name is the value is not a string the value is a dictionary so keep that in mind address the value is not a string it's a dictionary all right so how do we parse these kind of things well what we will do is we will go to the decoder and we'll have to write the code ourselves to decode it the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to get the container based on the store keys so there we go so what store keys are we talking about well the store keys we have defined over here so this means that this particular container that we got based on the store keys will know about the fields which is right here now fields we don't really care that much about we need the nested values for the fields so name and address so what we're going to do is we're going to ask the container for the nested container so container dot nested container and now we can pass in the field keys dot self and for key is fields and let's call it field or fields container whatever you want to call it field container great now inside this field container and make sure that you pass and try inside the field container we actually have those values we can use the field keys to get the name and the address which is right here the name and the address but the name and the address are not string they are a dictionary so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create another structure to accommodate that part right over here i'm going to go ahead and create string value which has a value property and the value is mapped to the string value so now i can go over here and i can decode the field container so field container dot decode string value dot self for the name value dot value and now we can assign the value to the name the same thing we can do with the address decode because address is also string string value dot self dot address dot actual value and we will go ahead and assign it to the address all right now this can obviously blow up so we will go ahead and try with call with try there we go 
Now, what will you do if the value was not string? Perhaps you will end up creating int value or something like that. Uh, this is, yeah, this is definitely a complicated question that what if the values were different, we may end up creating some sort of a enum kind of a thing that we can, uh, not enum, but like a switch case or an enum where we can see if the value is string, then we do this, and if the value is int, then we do this, and so on. So now let's go back to our code and get the actual response. So right over here, we're going to try to decode it. There we go. And I guess we can use decoding option. Then we can go ahead and say if let response equals to response. We're going to just unwrap it. Let's go ahead and uh, print it out. So we're just going to print out the response. Now let's go ahead and run this. And try to see that if it displays anything on the console. Okay. And it's not running because we didn't call resume. So that's the first thing uh, you should do. If you don't call resume, obviously it's not going to work. Okay. So here we go. It is actually populated correctly. And we can also go ahead and say dot stores of zero dot name and also address if you want to print the address. And there we go. So now it should be also be printing the name, Albertsons. All right. And obviously, if you try to print number one, it should print the other one, which is HEB. The same you can do with address. But in the end, you'll see that if you are using the Fire Store as a RESTful API, it is quite a bit of work to change it to convert it from the JSON because. Firestore does send you JSON in a kind of like a weird way. Um, and the, 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 the main thing that they send you in a weird way is because they are storing it in that kind of a fashion, in a key value, key value in a JSON structure. So that's why they send it out to you in this way. All right. Uh, but if you have a choice, then I would definitely go with the uh, Firestore client and make sure that you're using that. Uh, but if you do need uh, the RESTful API, then this is how the RESTful API works, and this is how the decoding works. Hey everyone, if you have enjoyed this video, then check out my latest course, which just got released yesterday. It's called the Complete Hands-On Swift UI Apps Using Firebase. This is my brand new course that you can get for just $9.99. I will have a link in the description. Please, 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 please use the link in the description. And if the link uh, it, it is a, a link for your discount. You will get it for $9.99, but please use the, the link that I'm putting in the description. And uh, when you use the link and you use it within the time period, then you can get the best deal. And since it's my link with my code, I will get to keep a little bit more revenue. Thank you so much if you do that, right? So this course is six plus hours long. Very, very practical course about how you can use Firebase with Surf UI applications. You can see that we are going to build a grocery app. We are going to build a fungi finder app, which allows you to take a picture with your phone, upload it to the Firebase storage, and then display it. And also, we are going to build a Let's Chat app, which will allow you to chat using the Firestore real-time update feature. So this is just a fun, fun, fun course for you if you want to ever learn about Firebase and how to use Firebase with Surf UI. You can already see we have 104 students in one day. So go ahead and enroll. And when you enroll, use the YouTube link. Thank you so much.